Hello, everyone, and welcome to Jim Dalton's presentation on the first hour, How Important Is It? It is November 20th, 2014, currently 9 a.m. Eastern. We're going to go till about 10.30, the first hour of trade. And uh, my name is Julia Stewart. I'm a partner here with Jim at J. Dalton Trading, and I'll be moderating this morning. I'm also a student and uh, a trader as well, so um, I will take your questions and... Um, type some into you as well, but I'll pose them to Mr. Dalton. So Jim and I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. It's so fabulous to see you. We have quite a few people pouring in, and uh, we thank you for your time and taking the time out, particularly before the open, to um, hear what um, we have to share. And uh, we trust that you'll be glad you came. So we'll do our part and do as much as we can to make this as fruitful in an hour and a half of your time as it possibly could be. And um, if you have any questions after, you're always welcome to contact us, um, email or phone. And um, with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Jim Dalton. OK, I don't see the show my screen yet. Coming at you, sir. Okay. There we go. We're good. Okay. Good morning. Uh, we have got about three days worth of things that we're going to cover in the next half hour uh, in order to give you a really meaningful um, webinar this morning. Uh, some of what we're going to talk about is, is not easy, and it really draws the line. You start to quickly understand the real complexity involved in, in trading. Um, it is not easy. It is not, it is not by the numbers, um, and we do an awful lot by understanding the behavior of the people that we are constantly competing against. Mr. Dahl? Yes. I beg your pardon. I didn't mention in the intro, but everyone, hopefully, you, if you're just coming in, I had my uh, screen showing. We have three reports loaded at the, our website, jdaltontrading.com, and uh, that we have them here in the slides, but it'll help you if you go to jdaltontrading.com, resources, upcoming webinars, or webinars, upcoming webinars, and today's post, and you'll see three links there to um, download reports that you can follow along with Mr. Dalton because this is advanced. We don't want to lose you and at the same time um, we want you to get as robust a presentation as possible. So I just wanted to interject that. Thank you to Jim. Thank you. Okay, the first slide um, starts off, takes us back to uh, coming into yesterday. The What has happened before usually has a great impact on the first hour of trade. We're starting with, as we came into yesterday, I want you to understand uh, the background coming in to yesterday. On Tuesday, November 18th, we had an upside breakout. The prior all-time high had been at 20.43.75. And we had an upside breakout on, on Tuesday. The early in the morning, the pullback, we had a pullback in C period, and that pullback went to 2044, just a single tick above the prior excess high, or the prior all time high at 2043.75. That was an important piece of information. The fact that it, it's a great day trade. It's a wonderful day trade because it goes exactly to the spot. It gives you a great place to get long and a very tight stop just back someplace below the 2043.75 level. However, we are always talking about the importance of carrying information forward. Carrying that piece of information forward, that actually was a very weak low. It was a good low for the day time frame. It was a weak low going forward. The reason it was a weak low going forward is when a market goes to within a single tick, a single tick of a previous reference. That tells me that the buyers there are weaker day time frame and short term buyers. Longer term money was never going to let the market come down to within a tick of a previous high. They have just 
too much size. They wouldn't even know where that is. They're just, if they're going to buy, they're going to be out there buying fairly aggressively, and you're not going to get back down to that very mechanical level. So that's the first first piece of information uh, we were carrying forward as we got ready for yesterday. Now, again, on going back to Tuesday, remember, what has happened before has a great impact on the first hour of trade. Tuesday, the market rallied till late in the afternoon. The tempo was exceptionally slow, um, and the market just ground higher almost all day long until you can see finally an L period. It left a poor, it left a poor high, but then you got a liquidating break. The reason you got that liquidating break starts early in the morning because this was such a weak reference. So this gives me inf uh, inf indication that the money taking the market higher is weaker money. So now I come in and I, I close out Tuesday. I'm preparing for Wednesday and I know that I closed well off the high on Wednesday. I know that the volume was only 3.3 billion. I know that is below what far below what we should have had for an upside breakout. The next thing I know is that the overnight low was at 2044.50. So again, it's just a half a point or two ticks above the daytime frame low and just three ticks above the upside breakout low. So I, I know I'm saying, you know, that really, I, I didn't think that was strong to begin with. So coming into yesterday, one of the things that we wrote yesterday morning we wrote we wrote scenarios and one of our three scenarios one of our three scenarios was that the market would get the stops we have would have had an accumulation of stops at 2044.50 which was the overnight low 2044 which was the daytime low and 2043.75 which was the previous all-time high what we wrote in the scenario coming into yesterday morning, and you have this is printed out for you, this is printed out for you, um, was can the market resist going after those stops down there? We constantly talk about the fact that trading is a game. It is a game, and the game is played by some fairly sophisticated, experienced traders. It doesn't, I could figure it out, and I was writing about it the night before, I can see these prices, I know there's going to be stops at that, at that level. Not only are they exit stops for people that got long the day before, but there may also be new entry level stops for traders that want to get short if the market re-enters the previous range that starts from 2043.75 on down. So that was that was part of our preparation coming into coming into um, yesterday morning and like I say I'm just going through these very quickly you have all this written out for you Julia told you how to get to these places so you don't have to remember everything we're talking about right now okay so with that preparation now we're ready yesterday morning we're ready to begin trading we come in yesterday morning the first thing you see the level right right here is there's a period which was the early morning high right across from that is the settle from the previous day so the market yesterday morning opened and went a tick short of the settle from Tuesday. And you can see it, you can see it again over here where it's broken where it's broken out. One tick shy of the settle from Tuesday. People that have been with us for any I don't know what just happened. The heat from my People have been with us for any point at any period of time know how often we focus on 
where does the opening take place? Some people would look at that yesterday and say, well, I have a very strong open and drive market, and that is correct. But I also know that it was a single tick below unchanged. When a market trades off from exact from an exact reference, just as we talked about the previous day, when the market rallied from just a tick above an exact reference, that that is a sign of a weaker buying. When I see a market that sells off from a tick below unchanged, that's also information I'm carrying forward to tell me that the uh, uh, the selling is more emotional and most shorter term than it is more serious longer time frame selling. Remember the three lines down here represent the area of stops that we had talked about. And we one of the scenarios and we write three scenarios every day in order to give you some idea of what to look for. I mean you should I should say it differently. You should write three scenarios every each day so you have some idea what to look for and how to make adjustments on the fly once the market starts to move. The market broke right off the opening. We came down and you see the three lines. We got those stops. We got those stops and of course the market then, remember once you get those stops, you're selling off the opening. Once you get those stops, all of a sudden Everything looks pretty pretty negative because the stops accelerate price on the downside and everybody then and you had an awful lot of people that were long, blindly long from the day before, not recognizing how weak that upside breakout was. Remember we said it was on three point three billion and we probably should have had four billion plus for a day like that. We should have had an elongated profile. We shouldn't have closed we shouldn't have closed weak. We should have closed on the highs or near the highs if we had anything. So, you know, there was a lot of non-thinking, weak people that got long on that day. They are now they are now being forced out of the market yesterday morning. So if you don't appreciate what is going on, it can look like you've got a trend day to the downside yesterday. And one of the things that we have an intensive that starts in January. We also have an, what we call a continuation program. And the continuation program is I do chat. I have a one-way chat box that I chat out to our clients um, every, single day, every single day, and I'm here in front of the market um, all day long. One of the things that I was chatting about yesterday and you can see these, there's timestamps on them and, every, and they're all available. On the move lower, chat comments stated, we aren't getting much on the move down for all the work. Now you say, if you look here and you say, well look at this, we got all these single prints, where it looks to me like we're going lower pretty, pretty sharp. But notice, Tuesday's pit session low. Look how much trouble we had getting to Tuesday's pit session low. Had the market really been made up of stronger sellers, not just liquidation. You always got a question of liquidation, and then the question is, do you have liquidation combined with new longer term selling? And when I look down here, if you didn't have a reference being the previous day's range, you would say, wow, look at this market. Look at all these single prints, A, B, C, D. Look at this market going lower. Now, once you have a point of reference, and the point of reference being Tuesday's low, you find out, here's Tuesday's low, I'm sorry, right over here. Did we get below Tuesday's low? Yes, we did. But there was no real follow through. The expectation, when you take back a, an upside breakout day, the expectation would be for the market to really start to accelerate lower because you reverse that whole day. When the market couldn't do that, the market kept coming back into the previous day's range. It pushed. Remember, a lot of people think this market's weak, and they're pushing, and they're pushing, and they're pushing. I continually chatted that we weren't getting much for what happened. We re-entered the, the Tuesday's range, 
And anybody that knows me knows that I make the statement, when a market re-enters a previous day's range from either above it or below it, the hair on the back of my neck starts to stand straight up because that is the potential for a pretty interesting, interesting day. Okay. You can see um, early what I didn't mention earlier. Uh, it looked to me like yesterday um, there were too many single prints in the morning. Let me go back to that for just a second. Some people said, "Well, this is this is really something." All these single prints. I would say, and people that have been with us know, I say, be careful. That's almost too many single prints. When you get that many single prints, very often. It is an indication that what you're seeing is liquidation or short covering if it's going the other way, and emotional, very emotional type of selling. Remember also that this came from a single tick above unchanged, which is also another sign of shorter term selling, liquidation, and people that are just very, very emotional. So too many single prints, which we pointed out yesterday and on the, on the chat and continue chat that it just didn't appear to be um, getting a lot for all the work it was doing. And what I'm really talking about is you know, you really can't get down and get any lay any real legs down below the previous days, the previous days low. Okay. Now one of the things that I was talking about that I also chatted yesterday, put on the chat yesterday, I was looking at the area, the 2040, I don't know exactly what this area, must be 2040, uh, 2042 or so, right here. Early on, I put out a chat. Before we were three wide here, before we were three wide here, I said if there's any real um, continuation on the downside, we should not get three wide at this level. In other words, once we get three wide here, it makes it harder for the profile to elongate. We did get three wide here, then the market continued on down for another couple of periods. But this really caught my attention that if the market were that weak, you're probably not, a, we call that an anomaly, you're probably not going to get that anomaly being three wide there. Yet the market continued, the market continued to trade lower. Let's go back. Let me see what we got. Um, okay, the market continued to trade lower. Remember, right here would have been three wide. We re-entered the previous day's range. We entered the previous day's range, came back in, and then the, the chat comments all changed. The chat comments now continually pointed out that the market was more than likely shorter than most people would have imagined. And even as the market got up all the way up here, the chat comments continued to say, um, I don't think the market's gone far enough for all the shorts to cover. Now, why would you say it's that short? It goes back to all the work it did yesterday morning without being able to really get any acceptance down below the previous day's low. When the market goes back up, people aren't going to cover right away. You'll get some early covers, but you get a lot of people that hang on and hang on and hang on. So what happened when the, when the announcement came out from the FOMC, you got the last run up you got those those shorts covered. Notice it also went back through the early morning high that we said was um, a very questionable high because it was a single tick above unchanged. So now the market then, when we get into uh, uh, we settled, sorry, we then settle up near um, near the high below the the, the J period prints uh, yesterday. You will also notice that there wasn't much smoothness on the market. All right, now with that, and I'm sorry I'm rushing because we've only got nine minutes until we open this morning. So now we are ready to come into um, 
we're ready to come into today. As we get ready for today, I look at the high, and I have no meaningful excess on the high from the upside breakout on Tuesday. That may not be meaningful, at least right now. It's a piece of information that I carry forward, but it is a notation that Without any excess, more than likely, I didn't have any strong selling from up there. In other words, I, I had liquidation, but it's highly unlikely that I had smarter, longer-term money selling from there. More than likely, what I had was just liquidation from weak longs that mechanically bought the market on Tuesday. We settled uh, below the high yesterday. Notice we have a prominent point of control. The market did not elongate out. We know that yesterday was mostly short covering late in the day. The market could have, after we failed, after we failed uh, to find and build value below Tuesday's range, this market could have elongated up and easily gone after this high. It didn't. It shortened. It shortened out. It got squatty, which tells me that more than likely, all I had yesterday afternoon was short covering. And, and that's why that short covering yesterday, that's why the chat comments com continually pointed that out. But it was grueling. And the reason I was so careful to point that out, the market was so slow going up yesterday. Had I had a combination of short covering and new money buying on yesterday's rally, the rally would have been far more robust. It wouldn't be this slow, grinding rally. So now one of the things that I know is that short covering can actually weaken a market because it removes potential buying power from the market. So there's a good potential that the short covering yesterday actually was weakening, weakening the market coming into, coming into today. Okay, let's, um, we'll come back to, let me go over and let's look at um, where we are on today's market. Okay, so now let's mark, let me clear some of this up. Make this just a little simpler. So the first thing I'm going to mark I'm going to mark um, Wednesday's low. I'm going to mark um, the settle. This is Wednesday's settle. Now I'm going to look and I'm going to say, okay, 100% or almost 100%, I'll be given a few ticks, Almost 100% of overnight inventory is short. What we know and what I wrote in the report this morning, that ruling reason is like yesterday morning, my ruling reason were those cluster of stops were all within a very tight price range. This morning, my ruling reason is that overnight inventory is 100% short. 60, about 65% of the time, when overnight inventory is this short, we get a counter auction to that overnight inventory. The second caveat, so the odds are that we get a counter auction relative to overnight inventory. The second thing is that if there is no counter auction to overnight inventory, then more than likely the market is really weak. If the, that happens, the next reference I have is down to 20, 31, 25 level, which would have gone back to, um, what is that? That would have been uh, Monday's low. Um, that would have gone back to Monday's low. So that would be my next downside reference. So right now, we're, we've got about five minutes for the opening. Overnight inventory is 100% short. My point of control uh, from yesterday is 2044.75. Uh, if the market, we do get a short covering rally, um, that would be one of the first objectives trying to make the point of control. 
if the market should rally this morning, which would be the expected um, outcome, we don't know if that's going to happen. And remember, if it doesn't, then the market is usually relatively fairly weak. Uh, but if it does rally, the objective would be to yesterday's point of control. If we get to the point of control, then the next question is, do we get what kind of value do we get? If we end up with, if we end up with um, lower to overlapping to lower value today, then we have a short-term auction to the downside. Right now, I have all auctions as up. Uh, the short-term auction value was overlapping to lower yesterday, um, and that may be a signal of, of change. But now we're going to see what we get. Today, but if I get lower value today, then we have a short-term auction to the downside. We've got about three minutes for the opening. Uh, I know that's not much time for questions. We covered a lot of material. It's all written down there for you, and we'll field questions uh, later on, as well as you can type them in or email us. Julia, something quick before the opening? Hello, sir. Um, thank you very much, Jim. Uh, we don't. Um we don't have any, we have a question from earlier when you were talking about the single prints and the three wide and someone was saying, well, what is a sign of a good sell-off? You said a bunch of single prints is questionable and then you say three wide is a questionable sign too. Yeah, a, a good, a good sell-off, I mean, really, a, a good sell-off um, isn't, it doesn't have that much emotion to it. A good sell-off, you, you know, you, you, you'll elongate all. You'll elongate all day long. You'll also get you'll get increasing volume in it, which you didn't get yesterday. Good, you won't get those anomalies that you had in that ABC period early in the day. Uh, but a lot of it comes with experience. Remember, one of the things I commented yesterday, it was it was it was working awfully hard not to get out the previous days lower, find value below it. Without that point of reference, if you were only looking at price, which is what too many people do, without the point of reference of the previous day's um, low, you probably would have lost perspective yesterday and thought the market was weak, and you probably would have gotten caught on the short side. Um, but that perspective that we couldn't get any follow through once we got the, below the previous day's low, that gave you a whole different, should have given you a whole different feeling and you say, ooh, be careful on the short side. And this is why the chat comments continually said yesterday we weren't getting much for what we, you know, how much effort was going into it. And additionally, once we got into the period's range, the chat comments kept saying, be careful, this market may be sh much shorter than you think, which in fact it was. And even as the market was grinding higher, continue to put out those comments because with all the work in the morning, there wasn't enough time for all those shorts to have been covered. Okay, we're going to open here in just a few seconds. We're going to open right near, um, right near uh, yesterday's range, okay. uh, and we're going to see what we get. We know the expectations are for a counter auction relative to overnight inventory, and okay. if we don't get that, the market's weak. All right, great, Jim. Thank you. What we're looking at here is conventional construction. <laughs> Sorry about that. TPO profiles. Um, Jim's chart is going to flip now, and you'll be seeing a volume profile, all trades um, on the left, and uh, you'll see the conventional construction composite profile, meaning it's collapsed, and Jim's going to make that larger for us, and um, you'll see it split out as well. Jim, we may need to Okay, now we're starting to potentially see the overnight inventory. We have to wait, but if you want to go ahead and narrate, Jim, um, you've got to put on the other one down lower. Is oh, okay. That, um, okay, I'm sorry. Which one am I going for? This one? Uh, try that one. Okay. Okay, great. And you can probably turn off the other, the top one that you turned on. We can leave it for now if you want. No, no, don't. Okay, yeah, thanks. Okay. Okay, so the first response this morning is we said the first, the first expectation 
would be to rally off of the opening because overnight inventory was very short. The question now, we've re-entered the previous day's range. We haven't had any acceptance up there yet. Jim, um, thir third yes. time template down. Can you turn on the overnight inventory? It's the third one down, and you click on yes yesterday. Take off today or not? It doesn't matter. You can leave it. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. So, so we're still within the overnight range. We're still within the overnight range. We re-entered uh, yesterday's range. So, Jim, if you are a day trader, this is a trade that it depends on your trading style, but you can play the overnight inventory adjustment. I Absolutely. Know a lot of traders that do that. Yeah. It Absolutely. Depends on your style. Yeah. yeah, it's it's you know it's an odds it's an odds type it's an odds type play, um, and you can see right so so far we're getting the expected we're getting the expected response. Um, as we said, this is what we see about sixty five percent of it about 65 percent of the time the most difficult the most difficult situations come up when you get a counter auction to overnight inventory and you get all excited thinking you really got you really have you know a big move to the upside and all it was was just correcting overnight inventory and then once the overnight inventory was corrected then the market turns back south those are the trickiest days we ever trade. Now, normally on overnight inventory, I, I only look at the total distribution of the overnight inventory. I generally don't look at the formation. However, something did change last night, so I am going to look at the overnight lower distribution. I am going to. It's not a big thing, but I am looking at the overnight uh, distribution because. We clearly had a change in here, and I'm guessing that's probably about when Europe opened. Um, okay, so right now um, we look below yesterday's range. Overnight inventory was almost 100% short. We are getting some short covering from overnight inventory right now. We don't know if it's any more than that, uh, but we have so far we have gotten the expected response. Okay, questions coming up there as we give me one second, Jim. We don't have a lot of we have a question. Mm -hmm. Crude is above uh seventy five dollars. Do you look at such um other markets, you know, in your analysis? No. no there were times there are times when the market does crazy things that I might. But the, it's a real difficulty. Remember, if you're looking at another market to see how to trade this market. You're not the only one. Other people know what's going to. So that information's already embedded in in this current market. So I do not. Matter of fact, looking at other markets will very often give you cognitive dissonance and cause you to really mess up this market. Um, you know, I'm not oblivious to what's going on. If you get big big moves in things, what the market reacts to more than anything else is really gigantic types of of moves that take the dollar or gold or something really out of out of whack um, but no I, I I find off I'm generally better by staying with this market because the the buy and sell orders that come in here they'll reflect they'll reflect uh, what the dollar's doing what the crude oil's doing what the, um, the short covering they reflect an awful lot of different opinions okay so now we're still we have re-entered yesterday's range we're only five minutes into the uh, to the market, we saw one little attempted pullback there, and they came after the market pretty fast on that attempted pullback, which is very consistent when you have markets that are caught too short. So so far, remember this morning, um, what I said. My ruling reason yesterday were all those stops clustered within about a point, a point or so. This morning, I said my ruling reason was overnight inventory. In other words, I, I try, instead of looking at too many things, I try and bring down, I say, 
what do I think is really important out of the box this morning? It, it may not be what's important by the time the day is over, but it's what do I think is important right out of the box this morning? And the first thing, I, what I thought and what I wrote was overnight, overnight inventory. And so far, that's exactly what that's exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing a counter auction to overnight inventory. I don't usually do it, but we are going to use the reference of the double distribution from overnight. And the only reason, if there wasn't a double distribution, I wouldn't pay attention to it. But the fact that something did change in, in this level. And so if there's anything really meaningful on this rally, I'm going to get back up above this 2041 level. Okay, now the market's backing off a little bit. One of the day time frame references is half back, which is right here at 2038.50. So, so far, so far, we are seeing the expected results, and the expected results were uh, counter auction to overnight inventory. Which so, was short, so we're just Which was one, yeah, basically 100% short. Jim, when considering the overnight inventory, are you also paying attention to the fact that the pit session open um, was below yesterday's pit session low, you know, below the range of the day? Not really. I mean, I'm aware of it, and I know we came back in. But it, it wasn't, I, I was I, I was basically focused on, um, well, number one, did, did we, if we would have stayed out of there, out of yesterday's range, yes, I would have paid attention. But we didn't. And, you know, now my focus is on the uh, overnight inventory adjustment, and now the the question is, um, you know, as the day go as the day goes on, what kind of volume we're going to have for this first period, um, and how much short covering are we really going to get? And and to interject, Jim, I think that the fact that we were below yesterday's low in inventory and the overnight trade was so short, that that helped you um, give it more weight in call it ruling reason, correct? I mean, because the, the market had moved to a pretty extreme level. Yeah, Would you say because, that uh, just in terms of people understanding why you might have come to that? It might have had to do with the open being, you know, at the extreme. No, I, my, my, my reason really was overnight inventory was 100% short, or almost 100%. And it short. opened near the overnight low outside of yesterday's range, so it, you know, had moved pretty extremely. Well, it opened. It opened. My my focus was it opened near the lower end of the overnight inventory. Yes. Um, the fact that it was, uh, I certainly got my attention. It's the you know also yesterday's low certainly has my attention, but my focus, quite honestly, was really heavily on the overnight inventory, the overnight low, which is below yesterday's low. If there's anything, if there's anything really there, the first thing the market would have done was. You know, tested Take that uh, overnight low. It couldn't even do it. Low. Yeah. Now, this is not. This is not a robust. This is not. This market is not robust on the upside this morning. You got some short covering early on. Remember, I said one of the most difficult situations is when you get the counter auction to overnight inventory, and all it's doing is allowing that inventory to come in balance, and then the market turns and goes the opposite direction. You'll notice this last pullback went to, this is half back right here, 2038.50, I think we went a single tick below it. Um, that is not a particularly, that is not a particular sign of strength to go exactly to over to half back. Um, it's, 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 it's a nuance, it's a nuance. And a lot of times if the shorts were still caught, uh, they will try and buy it exactly at half back. But we're seeing short covering in here this morning, but we're not seeing we're not seeing overwhelming uh, evidence uh, just yet. But we have re-entered yesterday's range. We are doing the expected, which is a counter auction to overnight inventory. Um, and we're now at the top of the double distribution from overnight. And believe me, I don't normally pay much attention to that. It's just that this uh, something did change last night. Okay, the market went down to half back, tick below it. The buyers came in. That is usually an indication of um, the shorts that have to cover. Um, they a lot of times see that as the best place they're going to get to be able to uh, to cover, which was that half back. But it's certainly not a sign of strength. Okay. Okay. Questions. Um, 
Yes, thank you, Jim. And sometimes we've seen this recently, too, where it's it's um, slow going up, but nonetheless going up or down. You know, it, it's just listless, but it's not giving up a lot either on the down. You know, it's it went back to half back, but it's still making its way higher. You know, we've seen this at, uh, on Tuesday. The, the rally was really pretty labored as well. So it can be tricky. Yeah, but the, the, the big things are, you know, if you take the piece of time. One, our ruling reason was overnight inventory was short. We're getting a counter auction. Secondly, we re-entered, we looked below and re-entered re yesterday's range. As I said before, any time we look below or above a previous day and come back in, the hair on the back of my neck stands straight up. And I use, I will use it automatically. When we look below yesterday's low and come back in, I will almost automatically take a long. Right, um, and especially when you have the overnight going for you as well. And that's what I mean. Even though it's not ambitious, it's, it's still, I wouldn't get out of my long yet. I would let it just try and work and be patient. But it doesn't have the conviction I like to see, but... That's no, but it's not. It's not unusual. Sometimes it, yeah. the shorts don't like the cover line right away. Now we start to look, and one of the things, um, remember, I said earlier um, yesterday there were maybe too many single prints. We're getting a lot of single prints in here, for um, you know, just uh, less than 15 minutes into the market. You get a lot of single prints on short covering. You get a lot of single prints on long liquidations. Mm, okay. Yeah. What else we got? Yeah. Thank you very much, Jim. Um, okay. What what signs do you look for once price price moves back into the prior day's value area and above the value area um, that it is getting accepted and might move to the point of control in the value area high and that it's not being rejected out of the value area? What are you looking at on the upside as you're monitoring for continuation? On the long, I don't. I don't look at the upside. I look from the beginning. I look to see what kind of confidence do I have from the opening. But and right now, looking, clearly, the, I'm sorry, sir. Then I'm looking for con, upside continuation. You but know, the point so, of control um, being probably yeah, yeah, one I, target. I, I don't. I, you know, and then I, as the day goes on, I look to see. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, it looks pretty strong so far this morning. But remember, value clearly lower now. Doesn't mean it's going to be that way when the day is over. Um, you know, it's, uh, but I look to see, I, I'm going to look when uh, when we come up on the half hour, I'll look to see where we where we close. I'll look to see what my first half hour volume is. If there's anything here, my first half hour volume ought to be, uh, you know, ought to be over 400, 400,000 um, mm -hmm. uh, shares. I mean, those are the kind of things. Uh, like I said, there's almost too many single prints here. Um, and I'm watching half back. I just continue to monitor for continuation. I'll look to see when we change periods. Do we one time frame higher? Remember, the trickiest days, the trickiest days are those days when you get the correction to overnight inventory, and that's all it was. Once that is corrected, the market then heads back south. This overall market is not particularly strong. Remember, first of all, I'm not comfortable that we never had a, any excess on this high. That's certainly got my attention. But the new breakout level was at 2043.75, right up here, and we're back down below it again. So the market's getting very tired. We broke up above that. We had, we had the potential for an upside breakout, and the market didn't go. It came back down below it yesterday. We're back down below it again today. Um, so this this market is getting very very tired, uh, at least from what I can see, um, and so I'm very I'm very cautious I'm very cautious on the market overall. Okay, um, thank you, Jim. Remember once again, some of the most deceptive days when you get the short covering early from overnight inventory, but that's really not where the market's headed. It's just correcting that, and then you get um, other weakness that comes in. Jim, when you're looking, what is the significance of the double distribution in the overnight? Is it common, and if so, are we looking specifically for the migration into the single prints between the two distributions? What, what I said earlier, I usually don't use that. I usually don't look at overnight structure. The only reason I'm looking at it last night, 
something changed during the night. I don't know if that's when Europe opened, something changed. So anytime there's an element, that the market accelerated on the downside there, and it was simply an element of change. So that just becomes a reference today. If I get back, if I get back into this upper distribution, um, then I'm getting, um, I'm getting more pressure on the market. So it's okay. not, a, it's not a science. It just, you just look at it and say there was change took place there. Right. Okay. So and the market once again tried to back off, and once it backed off, there were buyers there again. Very indicative of when a market is caught short. Um, the pullbacks. While the market is still short, they are more aggressive. Um, first time we saw the market pull back to half back, maybe a tick below it. As the shorts are caught and the market creeps higher up there, they feel more and more tension. The more and more tension they feel, sometimes the narrower the pullbacks are before the shorts come in and, uh, and, and cover. Remember, more than likely, all the people that shorted overnight have not had a chance to cover. There's always those that are late and, and hold on. Everybody now that covered, that sold short in this lower distribution is now under is now underwater. Um, so, and also it's important to remember the people that aren't accustomed to, to dealing with this, the, the people that trade overnight are generally weaker hands traders. Um, the larger, smarter money, generally, and I say generally, if there's something really going on, they will be there. But generally, um, they don't, they, they're not active overnight. Um, I was in business with a guy one time. He had 57 phone numbers he could be reached at. Uh, he had a Falcon 10, a Falcon 50, and, you know, if there was something really going on, he could be reached any time. And, and big, big money, big traders. Um, if there's something really significant, they can be reached at any time, so they are capable of trading at any time of the day or night. Generally, the liquidity isn't very good overnight, um, and they don't do a lot of trading. And you'll find the overnight inventory, you know, it's a much longer session, but it generally represents about 25% of what took place um, during the day time frame. Okay, so far, what you saw is, remember, we wrote up ruling reason, Ruling reason this morning was the overnight inventory, the short overnight inventory, and uh, you know, it was 100% short. We re-entered yesterday's range, and so far you see exactly what is going on. And you see how it also tells you so many times traders are so misled by price. If you look at the market trading down overnight, uh, you say, wow, this market's pretty weak. You know, but you have you put it in a little different context. You say, who was trading overnight? Who was trading? That's weaker money. So the weaker, more emotional money got themselves short overnight, and that's why we see so many counter auctions. Um, and so now we're we're right at the edge of yesterday's value area. We said that the destination trade on the short covering becomes the 2044 level, which was the point of control. Um, Again, I will point out, this is an awful lot of single prints. It's an awful lot of single prints. Uh, it would be unusual if all those single prints remained throughout the day, but those single prints are very indicative of short covering. On the downside yesterday, they're very indicative of long liquidation. When traders are caught long or caught short, there tends to be an almost panic, panic buying if they're short, and panic buying if they're uh, panic selling if they're long, um, and that's just got an awful that's got an awful lot to do. We remember we, we said so many times people um, tell you they got programs and systems to trade the market based on prices and we use prices and, and we hold stuff. on Jim, did you kick out your mic? There we go. Are you there, sir? Whoopsie. Um, we'll wait for you, Jim. I don't know. Maybe he might have tripped his wire. Sure. Oh, I oh there you are, sir. Okay. Well, okay. We thank you. Yes, I did kick out my mic. Okay. Um, I, I, I kicked out. Uh, <laughs> yesterday, I kicked out 
both of my plugs for uh, my computers, so they both went down on me unexpectedly. <laughs> I, what, what, what's happened, I had, uh, for those that don't know, I had knee replacement a couple of weeks ago, and uh, what happens as I'm sitting here, I move my leg around to keep my knee from getting stiff. And in that process, I managed to kick a lot of things. Hmm. Okay, so we right now we, okay, go ahead. we are continuing higher. Uh, it's right on, right, right on what we wrote. The ruling, the ruling reason we re-entered yesterday. We re-entered yesterday's range. Um, okay, so so far this should have been very valuable. You saw yesterday the ruling reason was all the stocks, and we said the market could the market resist going after all those stocks clustered in that three price range? And the answer was no, they couldn't. Remember, it's a game. This morning. We said the ruling reason was that the uh, overnight inventory was basically 100% short. And, you know, smarter traders, when they realize they've got weaker money caught short, guess what they do? They squeeze them. They come in there, the smarter money says, we got them caught short. We squeeze them. Um, you know, I can see it. You can see it. We can talk about it. So it's, it's not a secret. It's not a secret. But so many people don't understand these games, and they really don't understand the market. Um, but and that's what we're we're really trying to do. And part of the thing when we do the chat comments all day, trying to give you a, another flavor, another flavor throughout the day as the market is uh, as the market is developing. Okay, you started to say like you've got some questions. Well, we had a comment from someone. How are you taking? You know the. I don't think we can see it if you slide your profiles over. They're perfect size, but just over to the right. You know the six day. Um, pit session high was uh, 2,043.25 and someone's asking are you looking at that number because we're back inside the bracket you know we had a trading range and are you no, looking I'm at not. that high level as something you know you're paying attention no, to no I'm not I mean, I'm aware it's there yeah 2043.75 was the overnight all-time high am I aware it's there yes I am um, but we've been back and forth through it several times. You know, right now I'm focused on value. I'm focused on can we reach the point of control up here. Um, and what so far, you know, I, I'm just, I don't get too scientific about it. Um, you know, early on, yeah, the other day I was very focused on the 2043.75. It was a combination of 2043.25, 2043.25, I think was pit session, 75, the electronic high. And as you people that with us know that we talk about electronic highs seldom are lasting in the market. Okay. Remember early on, we, we, we said that uh, uh, it was unlikely that all the shorts from overnight had been covered, had been covered yet, and had a chance to, to cover. Um, the the and, and of course you saw we said when that happens, uh, they buy shallower and shallower dips. The, the more squeeze they get. The first pullback we saw was basically a tip below, half back. Logical place for shorts to come in and cover. As as it went on, we saw you just feel that feel that panic. Feel that panic as the shorts continue to get squeezed and we go into the laggard shorts. And you'll see right now we're just short of the um, uh, point of control. Yesterday. Yeah. Point of control, but it's important that it was a prominent point of control. The more prominent a point of control is, and remember another word for point of control is Ferris price at which business is being conducted. The, the, the more prominent the fairest price at which business is being conducted is, the harder it is to get away from that level and not get drawn back to it. What gets you away from a fair price like that, a, a very prominent uh, point of control or fair price, is volume. And we didn't have that volume going down in the, uh, in the overnight markets. Jim, okay, um, we're now about five minutes before, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. We're five minutes until we change uh, time periods. Look in the lower right-hand corner, 7.55 my time, 9.55 Eastern time. Um, I don't even know. Do we have any announcements due out at uh, yes. 10 o'clock this morning? Thank you, Joseph. We've got Philly Fed at 10, existing home sales at 10. Okay. So we may get some additional volatility, you know, on the turn of the, uh, on the, turn of the hour. 
Okay. Um, so we're right up to that uh, 2044 level, uh, an even dollar level. Uh, we're going to look. Somebody give me the volume for, we've got four minutes to go. What's the volume been so far in the first half hour? Somebody got that number for me? Sure, we'll get it for you, Mr. Dalton. And also, Jim, about point of control, you know, we have a lot of articles at the training site for clients, but we also have available for, you know, people wanting to learn more before they invest anything. And basically, there's one number 80, forcing action. It talks about how many times the point of control is revisited. And you'll notice how it worked into this morning and how Jim had that in his sites before the the open and formulating his scenario. So if you want to learn more about prominent points control, revisiting of them, please go to our website, uh, resources, trading articles, number 80, forcing action. And that's a nice discussion. And a lot of our articles drill down into particular concepts so we can provide layering to what is a pretty involved um, way of looking at the market. So please check that out. Um, okay. And... Uh, Yes, we have 331. Okay, that's very low volume. 333, um, okay. Very low, very low volume. So now, we, more than likely, we look at that volume, and more than likely, what I had this morning, or what we had this morning, was short covering, not something that's far more potent, which would be a combination of new money buying and short covering. If I had a combination of new money buying and short covering, more than likely I'm going to have more volume than that. And Jim, yeah. following that conversation, someone's asking, is a point of control a short, a short point for you? Depending how it gets there, he knows, obviously, he's been in intensives, but can you, he formulate, because of the volume and what's going on, the tempo going up, certainly we're carrying forward and the confidence, but can you, would you think a short is wise at the point of control or around there? No, I, I, I do very, very few things automatically. Um, no, I, I wouldn't automatically there. I mean, it may Not be, automatically, but, uh, but he's wondering and his, he's no. thinking he wants to try and short it up there. Would you think that a wise or... I'm, no, I'm, I'm neutral. I mean, it's, you know, it's, how does it get there? We still... We've got announcements. It's 758. Um, right. I do Good know that I'm not, I'm not particularly impressed with the rally this morning. I think it was short covering. And remember, another thing we call short covering, it's old business. Short covering is old business. It's taking care of things that already existed in the market. A strong rally would be a combination of old business, short covering, and new business, new money buying. We'll see. We've got a couple minutes till we get the final volume for the first half hour. But so far, um, I don't see anything more than short covering in here so far. Okay. And Jim, we have a question about too many single prints and single prints. You know, some people look and they're, what do you have to say about filling in single prints? We've had this conversation in prior webinars, but in terms of them acting as magnets, or do you have anything to say about single prints? Single. Wait a minute, are we talking about the single prints from the overnight, or are we talking about single prints this morning? Well, I more in the pit session and single, well, single prints in terms of um, yesterday's session. The too many single prints, we have a question on that as well. Um, but just single prints being revisited, say you have a double distribution, you've got like a barbell and you've got single prints between them. You know, yeah. many I, traders I, will say it acts as a magnet or they're looking for that. And just if you wanted to add to that question. You know, no, not really. Like I said, I only use it because something changed. I don't spend a lot of time on the overnight. Um, if the market would have faded right there, that would have been, uh, you know, I said, okay, I've got a reference. But it, it went through there fairly easily. Okay. okay, now, somebody give me the final volume for the first half hour. Yep. Um, at the training site, it's still updating. Um, let's see. Okay, 361 versus yesterday was okay. 4038. Okay, very low. All right, now. Um, Thanks, everyone. Okay, it's not uncommon. I don't. I don't know if there's any news or something, but you, you know, you got that spurt to the up. You get that spurt to the upside. Um, and one of the things, it's not uncommon that as you get near the end of the short covering. The last part of the short covering is a big spike. You know, when the Lackers. last ones throw in the towel. 
The target the market's going to be after night right now is going to be 2047 even. And the reason 2047 even is unchanged. Um, or settle from yesterday. From yesterday. Yep. Or settle from yesterday. Okay. Pit session. Right now, right now, you've got an awful lot of single prints in here this morning. Um, Meaning the A period stem now. The A period, the B period. Yep. You know, you've got this market getting very stretched out. I just think you had the market very short overnight, and they're just they're just playing havoc with those people. And what the smarter traders, what the smarter traders do, when they when they know that, the smarter traders they just come in and bid the market. They just come in and bid the market. So I mean I don't know what the news was, but you know, or anything else that's going on in here. But you know this market, we, we not, anytime you re-enter a previous day's range, anytime you re-enter a previous day's range, you said you better pay attention. Uh, it's, you know, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful trade. Um, I also said, remember up here, I'm carrying forward the, the high from the other day. There was no excess on that. There was no excess on that high, so I didn't have any indication that I had any um, um, any real selling uh, up there. Just liquidation versus new money selling. Markets generally are not going to go down for extended periods of time until you get some meaningful new money. Uh, selling. Right. And that last move sometimes, I mean, we don't know if it's the last move, but that, that laggard, that kind of speaks to um, markets and profile and the diffusion model and the field of vision DVDs where you got the laggard longs piling on. They can't bear to watch it go any higher without getting in. And then the laggard shorts who can't take the pain anymore and finally close it out. And that's often when we'll see that kind of spike up. Yesterday we saw it, you mentioned, in J period when there were all those single prints and it fell back quite yes. quickly. Yep. It was good excess. Yep. Yesterday, we, that's when I kept putting the post out to say, careful, right. yep. market's short. And then you finally, you got the towel thrown in here. Mm -hmm. The market right now, no. yep. there, you know, there's, there's a pretty determined market. They got them caught short. They've got them caught short in here. You know, people were asking before about the, the uh, uh, 2043, 20, 25, or 75, and the point of control, and and I don't focus so much. I let the, when I've got a day like today, you know, I look below yesterday's range. I know I've got a lot of them caught short when I look below yesterday's range. Um, I let the market run its course. Do I think there's a lot of single prints out here? Yes, I do. Do I think it's short covering? Yes, I do. But don't. But remember. What does the what do the daytime frame and short term traders do when they got that when they got that going on? They pile on and go long along with them, knowing that they've got them when they've got them squeezed. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, that's great, Jim. Thank you. Very helpful. Okay. Um, difference between the volume point of control and the TPO point of control. Volume is where the highest volume note is. We see it down around 98 down there at uh, 2039 level. TPO incorporates the time. So you'll notice the AB is green. That is the, the widest point left to right closest to the center of the range. So the time, Jim uses a conventional construction which incorporates the time element which he finds very important and I would agree. And the volume is just a volume High vo heavy volume node, highest volume node. Go ahead. Did you want to add anything to that, Jim? Nope. Um, you know, other than, other, you know, I always, um, I always focus on the TP. I'm not unaware of the, of the volume TPO, but I focus on the, um, the traditional TPO because it incorporates time, and, and time is very important to me. Remember. Price advertises opportunity. Too many traders go wrong because they spend all their time focusing in trading price. Um, price advertises opportunity. Time regulates all opportunities. And volume measures the success or failure of those advertised opportunities. You look at time this morning, so far, there's been no give back on time. There's been no give back on time. It's uh, any, little, any little pullback this morning has been bought. And that's usually a sign that the market was excessively short uh, overnight. And uh, 
it's going to run. It's going to run until it's completed itself. Okay. Um, so far, it's been an interesting morning. It hasn't been, you know, it hasn't been as tricky as a lot of the days we've had. Yesterday was a very tricky day to trade. Yesterday was exceptionally tricky today to trade, and an exceptionally tricky day to stay out of trouble with. Um, this has been a totally different day. I mean, we looked below. We looked below uh, yesterday's range. Overnight inventory is 100% short, and uh, the market's just been marching straight higher. We said earlier that the next objective would be 2047, which is unchanged um, in there. I mean, it's a typical uh, market right now. If you people look at their screens, the markets are red. You get above there, all of a sudden, then the markets are green, and it's a psychological unchanged. There's a real psychological level. Tremendous amount of single prints in here this morning. We haven't seen this in a long time. We haven't seen this many single prints in a long time in the marketplace. With the weekly one time framing higher, Jim, are the longer term guys not looking for any spots slash references lower to buy? The longer the longer term money, but you know, when the market fell nine point nine percent, you know, that's when the longer term money was coming in. The serious money. You know, when people use the term longer term, uh, when I use longer term, I'm thinking about, you know, the big investment funds. And, you know, the people that buy stocks and hold them for extended periods of, of time. Now, you take short term traders. And remember, short term traders can be, you know, three to five, maybe 10 days, but they sometimes have huge pools of capital behind them. I actually spend most of my time focusing on you know what a short term money is doing when the long term the long term money has been steadily buying this market for five or six years it's gotten very sluggish uh, lately very sluggish the momentum is still up uh, they're rotating portfolios but they're not sellers they're not sellers in markets and that's another mistake people make a lot of times they may see a market going up and they say boy that market really is a poor market, I'm going to short that market. Well, just because a market's sluggish going up doesn't mean that you want to sell it. You may get some liquidating breaks, but you still need to have the longer term money come in on the sell side. Remember, we're not far off the all-time high made the other day at 2054 level, and there was no excess. We got liquidation from that level. We got liquidation that went from that 2054 level down to the overnight low at 2035, you know, that's not a really a lot of liquidation. Um, but that's, you know, you got up there. But if you had real new longer term sellers coming in there, you're not going to, you're not going to be back where you are today. Uh, so now what did the market do right now? It stopped a single tick above unchanged. That is a very, very mechanical level. Uh, everybody said, oh, they're going to sell it at, unch at unchanged. And that's what they did. And they got, and there's people that automatically do that. That is certainly not a particularly secure high. It may last today, but it's not a particularly secure high to go just a single tick above unchanged. And that's when you look in the market, you say, well, yeah, there was automatic selling there. That is a, a, a day time frame trader. Somebody asked earlier about, you know, the point of control. I'd say, you know, the logical places where daytime frame traders buy and sell. They have a tendency to buy and sell, uh, meaning fade, the previous day's high and low, and the unchanged level. So this market coming up this morning, there was some automatic fading. Um, some were taking profits. And if I were doing the chat function, which I'm not right now because we're on here, what I probably would have chatted is we're coming up on we're coming up on unchanged. If there's going to be a problem on this morning's rally, more than likely it's going to come from the unchanged level. Its markets are very visual, very visual. It's very as easy to see. Everybody knows where unchanged is, and that's where you tend to get short-term money. Uh, you know, taking profits, taking profits, or um, um, you know, fading, uh, fading the rally. It's very easy to see. It's very visual. Uh, 
it doesn't take a lot of insight. But, and it's okay to use those levels knowing, remember, we're trying to understand the market in terms of the behavior of the people that we are competing against. And we we say this morning volume was relatively light, so more than likely we're dealing with short covering and day time frame traders. Uh, a great day time frame reference is going to be the unchanged level. Um, and you've seen us, people that know us, we talk about those things all the time. And of course that's where we that's where it came from, a single tick above uh, the low unchanged. But you also want to carry forward that even though the market may back off, that is not a particularly that is not a particularly secure high. When the market has to go to just a single tick above a reference to sell off, that's short term money, that's not your more serious longer term money. Okay, another couple questions. Yes, sir. Um Can Jim speak to the sequencing, in other words, the order in which things are happening that he possibly sees? In other words, if we keep a thin profile, take the poor high and fail back below the 2054 level. He's thinking really up there at the Tuesday poor high. Do you have anything to say about what you're envisioning as this auction develops? No, I really don't. Because, I mean, what I'm, seeing is I'm, I'm seeing a market that really is a very low confidence environment. There's no, there's no serious money on the buy side. There's no serious money on the sell side. So it's a totally low confidence environment. And as you can see, we've been the old high was 2043, 20, 25, or 75, depending on which number one of you. We've been back and forth through it. If we had a high confidence market on the upside, we'd have been above it and gone. If we had a high confidence on the market on the downside, we'd have come back into that previous that previous range and we would have start to really show some you know acceleration to the to the downside we don't have that confidence and it's all right just to say you know this is an extremely low confidence environment and you know in these low confidence environments you are better just to sit there and use day time frame structure in order to do your short-term trades. For example, can we pull? Can, can you, you excuse me, sir? Can you pull up your profile so we can see the lower part of today's session for the single people? Or just pull them up. Okay. You don't have to make it smaller. Okay, thanks. Okay. So you, um, you know, it's it's to me this is a perfect day time frame trade. One overnight inventory was short. Everybody said, you know, we won't, we enter a previous day's range. How many times have I said it? I've said it in live seminars and. Written. My, the hair on the back of my neck stands straight on up. You normally get some short covering. You get a great place. There's, we talk about asymmetric trading opportunities. This is an asymmetric trading opportunity. You, you come back in here, you go long, you got your stop someplace just a few ticks below it. It's a very interesting trade. It's got the right risk reward parameters uh, to it. You had the right contextual conditions that, that the market was, the in, overnight inventory was short, pre identified for you. Um, you know, and then if you're going up, um, the market really didn't show, really didn't show much until you got a single tick above unchanged. Again, a day time frame reference. Remember what we said, we want to understand the markets relative to the people we are competing against. And if, we, if we're competing against today, day time for short covering and multi day time frame trading, short term trading because the volume is pretty low early on. It's, you know, and I know I would have chatted, we're coming up to unchanged. If there's going to be a problem, more than likely that's where it's going to be. Why? Because that's the behavior of the day time frame traders. Is that a strong reference? Absolutely not. When you go to a single tick, a single tick above a reference or something like unchanged. Or below. Or below, that's just mechanical that's people doing mechanical trades. There's nothing wrong with doing mechanical trades as long as you know why you're doing them. And in this case, you say, okay, why would I do it there? Because more than likely, this is daytime frame and short-term trading today. That's a reference that, that group uses. So therefore, as I get up to that group, it's very likely that if there's a problem, that's where they would be selling. And it's also where they would be taking profits. It's also a level where they might be shorting the market. 
So again, guess what? If you have longer term money involved in this market, do you think that they even care about Unchanged? They probably don't even know where it is. That's not what they're If they've got a lot of these people have millions of shares to buy, they have no idea. What they're not even going to worry about that. But when you get these meticulousness of a tick short of a reference, it gives you great information, and the information is, who am I competing against today? I'm competing against the short-term traders. Now, we're watching. I'm switching topics here. Now, right now, if, if the market, if this was the high for today, our value would be overlapping to lower. So we're going to watch and see what happens. We said we don't think this is a particularly good high. So in order to get you know, unchanged or higher value today, we need to get through unchanged. And then once we get through unchanged, we need to get another, you know, another, leg, to the, uh, another leg to the upside. So now, as I think I wrote this morning, once we get the short covering rally over, then my emphasis shifts to watching developing, developing value. And developing value here is so far it's overlapping to lower. So now you said, what would it take to change that? Okay. Time regulates all market. So over time, we'll get more and more acceptance up here. Over time, we'll come up, we'll take out um, this very mechanical high, and we'll get an extension up um, over the, through the overnight low. So that's what we're watching. Now, we, and we look down the lower right-hand corner. It's 817. So I've got 13 minutes until I change time periods. And I'm going to look to see you know, if I start to get three wide down here at the ABC range. Um, it's a long time to go yet, but uh, so so far, so far, um, all we've seen I think is short covering, and, and when I say all, I think we've seen is short covering. Remember, once the short covering starts, there's a pile-on effect. You've got the shorts that have to cover. You have the smarter short-term money, and the short-term money, remember, can be very large pools of capital. The smarter short-term money that very on, very early on realizes the same thing I realized, the same thing we wrote about, is that there's shorts out there. So they come in and they buy the market in order to squeeze the shorts. Then you have a, another level of buying, and that is the daytime frame traders that just simply pile on to the direction that price is currently going. So, you know, and once you get that, it takes a while sometimes for that to, to dissipate. Um, but so far, we saw the early volume, we, early volume, we commented probably too many single prints um, in here, and now we're going to see what happens. Um, the short covering is over. My guess is the short covering is over. Uh, now the question is, where do we go? Where do we go next? In this and factor, mechanically, oh, mechanically they sold it one tick short of unchanged, sign of short term and day time frame traders, not a sign of longer term selling. Okay? And this speaks to what you were talking about early that too far, too fast. I mean, we can't see the bottom of A, but it doesn't go much below that, that um, a lot of single prints. And, you know, given the volume relatively low, didn't bode well for upside continuation. So this is kind of the second, taking it one piece at a time, which you teach all the time. Yep. And my guess is that this pop right here, that was probably, that was probably the last. Right, the laggards. Laggards short covering. A lot of times, you know, the statement we use over and over again, you know, the wagon runs fastest at the bottom of the hill. In other words, that last, that last swoop up or swoop down of its liquidation, swoop up if it's short covering, a lot of times that's the end of it. The laggards finally threw in the towel. And again, that becomes so important to understand how markets trade relative, relative to the behavior of those you are competing against. Mm -hmm. And that's why you yeah, talk so. You're not going to get that. Just, just following price. People that just follow price, uh, you're never going to get that context. You're never going to get that real feel. And my guess is you'll be continually frustrated in your in your trading. Um, you, you really it takes a long time to get to the level we're talking about this morning and the level we were talking about yesterday morning, going after those stops, going after the overnight inventory. 
it takes a long time to get to let, you know, it takes a long time when you see price down overnight. You know, it, it's a t you see the price down all all night long, and all we're asking you to do is buy it here. By golly, that that's not an easy that's not an easy buy, because the mind goes, oh, what if what if this thing really broke? What if this is really the start of something big? And uh, and that's why when it comes back into the previous day's range, I now have I now have what I what I call structural references. In other words. I re-entered the previous day's range, ah, so I can put my stop someplace, you know, not too far below this, because if I have anything, you know, I should maintain my structure, should show upside continuation, and I shouldn't come back out of this range, at least not by very much. So I'm, I can go long here with a place to put a stop. If I just automatically, oh, this market comes down like this, and I just automatically buy it, where, where do I put my stop? When I get a reference, like the previous day's low, I said, okay, I have a logical reference place to place my stop. I came into the previous day's range, and I want to stay out of that. Uh, I want to stay above it. And so it gives me a place to comfortably enter a trade and know that I have a logical place for a stop based on structure. Too many times people go, oh, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to risk two points. There is probably no faster way to lose your money than put a trade on and just watch it, just pick a number where you're going to put a stop. I'll, I'll risk two points or I'll risk three points. People tell me all the time, well, I'm always looking at asymmetric trades. I only had a two-point risk. I could have gotten 10. Well, no. What's wrong with that? If you don't have a structural place, you may only had a two-point risk because that's where you arbitrarily put your stop. But the odds may be that you're going to get taken out of that stop 80% of the time because it wasn't based on something. What, what you really want is you want a situation where you know, you've got to 3 to 1, 4 to 1, or 5 to 1 you know, return on your, you know, on your trade. When I look down below the previous day's range, I've got the potential to make it all the way back I got the potential to make it all the way back to the previous day's high. I'm not saying it's going to do that, but I certainly have that potential. Okay, now I'm shifting again here. We're at 8.23, lower right-hand corner, 10.23 New York time. We don't have any confidence in this high. It's a good, from a daytime frame trader, uh, you know, early this morning, said if there's going to be a problem, that's logically where it could come from. But the pullback from that, you got some, you got probably some profit taking there, and you probably got some day time frame fading or shorting from that level. They haven't gotten very much on the, they haven't gotten very much on the downside for that. And now you look down here, six minutes until we change time frames. Uh, you know, if you're short, you ought to be a little uncomfortable because um, number one, we said it's not a particularly good high to begin with. We said if there was going to be a problem, that's where it would come from. And that's exactly where it would have been a short-term trade. But look at that. There's no real downside follow-through from that level. And now we're going to change time periods in, in, in six minutes, and we'll be right back up, uh, you know, looking at that. And um, Go ahead. And you mentioned that last week as well. You know, in the webinar last Thursday, we talked about unchanged. It was another scenario where it went up one tick shy of unchanged or went down to it and you said I don't like that you know and it ended up coming back to it because it was just responsive selling it wasn't you know the fickle money selling it was or buying it wasn't um, that sticky money that really takes a position it was just responsive mm -hmm. and we're seeing it we've seen it several times mm -hmm. since that webinar but you talked about it last week for people that want to review that concept it's in the last week's webinar as well it, now, it, I, I, I do have some issue with the fickle money concept. concept. One, you, you, in one aspect, you're right. In the other aspect, it could be, it could be smarter short term. It could be a combination of both. It could be, sure. just as I said right here, if there's going to be a problem, that's where it's going to come from. So I may recognize that. So I, as I get up there in a short term trade, I may let my trade go there, which isn't necessarily fickle money. It's just if there's going to be a problem, that's where it's going to come from. The people that just arbitrarily waiting to sell, you know, a tick below unchanged, that's, you know, 
they have to be very much aware. If they know that they have to be right and be right immediately and they do it consciously, then that's a pretty good trait. They say, hey, you know, I'm going to short it here and I think there's going to be other people shorted here and this is why, but I got to be right right away. Hey, that's one trait. If you get somebody that's just shorting it, oh boy, I can short it one tick below unchanged. That's the fickle money. That's the, the money that gets that gets hurt. So remember, if you understand what they're going to do, you understand what the fickle money may do, you may be able to use that to your advantage. But understand, when you do that, you have to be right very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Jim, we have. Oh, go ahead. Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. The, well, let's talk about the three wide, and we were more likely to get it, you know, four minutes ago when we were down in the A B level. But is it? What is the significance of getting three wide at the point of control now, twenty forty three area? Um, what is Jim referring to as a mechanical buy? No, it wasn't. A t it was just if it got three wide. It just lessened the odds that we would get. Upside. upside continuation. That's all. It just shows you getting more and more acceptance down here. That's all. Mm -hmm. you didn't but, get it. You, right. You've continued to along. You've continued to elongate out. You know, and we're now back. Remember, we said this wasn't a particularly attractive um, high mechanical, and we did get a back off. Um, but you know, we're going to be up there. We're going to change the time period here shortly, and um, you know, the market's still uh, uh, still one time framing higher, and you know, and right now it's going to be targeting, uh, it's going to be targeting um, the overnight high. If the overnight high, you're then, you know, you're yeah, then the targeting yesterday's high. Yeah, I mean, who knows what this market can do? The overnight okay. high was right in the single prints of J. You know, the body of the profile. Mm -hmm. And Thurston had said we could have an outside day, which I said I oh. thought of that too <laughs> when we were opening. We could have an outside day. Person lives for the outside day. I know he's a great <laughs> trader, so it works for him. <laughs> okay, when he um, gets the outside day, <laughs> it's when you hang on too long for the outside day, it can be very disappointing. All right, yeah. um, um, I'm going to go back. To, you got another question? I have a couple, but just go ahead and finish no, your thought. Go ahead. Um, I've been trying to determine what is increasing volume at the turns. Is that after the fact or can you give any tips on that? Sometimes it's easy to spot, other times it's really difficult. And I'm not sure if he's, I think he's referring to futures volume. I mean look at the A period low, it's 14 contracts on the low. Um, I don't use it's, futures. Con I, I, use, I look over here on the See how much volume. Look, I know right here. I've got no volume on the right, low. Right, it's drying you up. Know, so it's it's drying up. I look. Um, here's a high volume, 9802. If that was selling, we'd be back below it. It wasn't. We went higher. It's morally buying. I'm looking at things like, I think I'm looking at things like that. Um, and like right now, Jim, that's all this heavy volume. We want to see if the market can chew through it, and you know get yeah. above it, but right now it's just, you know, we don't know yet which way to, where it's going to go with yeah. this, but we're cognizant and using it to lean on, you know, but right? So far we have not seen, we have not seen, yes, we have not seen any indication of sellers. We've got a lot of volume here. We also don't have a very good high. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to change time periods in a minute. So anyhow, I'm going back to the slides and I do our commercial. Uh, and then we'll come back and take a final look at the market before we sign Can off. Can you yeah, put it on slide because just from current slide, it's small. Just from current slide, there's an icon okay. there. Okay. All right. As, as I said earlier, we have a, a intensive January 20 to January 24th. Uh, it's five weeks. The intensive, I do eight to, eight to nine hours per week online. And... Um, you know, and we talk about the it's the S and P's, and occasionally we'll look at other markets. People have questions, not a lot, um, but we do from time to time. And uh, then when we're not when we're not live and online, there's a real time interday chat function at the training site where I'm constantly making comments. You heard some of those comments earlier. Yesterday was particularly uh, interesting because I kept saying the market was doing. Too much work on the downside and not getting very much. Referencing the previous day's um, low, no follow through below that, and I was very really helpful. It was a very difficult day to trade. One of the comments I wrote, I said, you know, it's a nail biter, and it truly was. 
but it was it kept you out of trouble. And then once the market once the market started up, continue to send the chat comments out. The market's probably shorter than you think it is, or maybe shorter than you would imagine or think it is. And I kept saying, you know, it's probably not over. And the market was grinding higher. And I'm sure there were a lot of people that wanted to short into that market because it was just agonizingly slow going up. But yet what I'm trying to reflect to people is with all that work in the morning, it's unlikely that the shorts have had a chance to cover yet. They're hanging on by their fingernails. And that's exactly what happened. So it was, again, it was very helpful from that aspect. It's the closest you're going to get to having mentoring from somebody that's in the market every single day. You know, it, it, individual mentoring, mentoring is extremely expensive. Um, and this is an economical way to come as close to having hands-on hand mentoring as you get. You get the eight to nine hours of inspection, of uh, 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 narration like we did this morning. You get the ongoing chat comments and and then once you're enrolled you become a member. You have over 100 trading articles and 60 webinars. Two reports daily. I do a uh, recap and preparation report at the end of the day. We do an update in the morning. You saw this morning's update was very important because it focused on what happened overnight and brought the inventory into play. And additionally there's uh, you know uh, emails and case and we'll have telephone calls with with folks. We do we do our best to give you things that you're not going to get any place else in the uh, in the educational world for trading markets. Um, if you sign up it's a, the the intensive there's a pricing for the intensive starting in January. There's a separate pricing for the continuation for the the chat comment leading up to January that we're doing right now. Um, it's very, very reasonable. It's just to give you, if you're coming from the last intensive or previous intensive, it just gives you continual reinforcement prior to getting into January. If you're coming new to the process, it the chat comment continually exposes you to the concepts that we're talking about all the time prior to actually entering the five-week intensive in January. Um, We'd love to have you join us. It's a very serious, uh, it's a very serious program. Uh, we're with it all day long, and uh, we're real, we're real traders. Um, okay, uh, before we leave, as you can see, we now we went back up and tagged unchanged exactly. We do not have a good high now. We have a very strung out, very elongated profile today, but that's what happens when you get the short covering, and then you get the piling on from the day and short-term time frames. Final question or two, Julia? Yes, thank you, Jim. Do you use the 80% rule when price re-enters yesterday's range? No, I really don't. Um, you know, I wrote about it. It's one of those things I learned from uh, Stottlemyre years ago, and as I did my own work over time, I, I found that uh, it had some reliability, but I found I'm far better off to monitor the day as it's developing. As you've seen here, the, the more mechanical things have a tendency to let you down when, when you really need them the, the, the most. Am I aware? I'm aware of value overall. The bigger picture value, I'm aware is my value more than likely going to be lower, overlapping to lower, unchanged, overlapping to higher, higher. I'm very much aware of value. I am don't pay nearly as much attention to the exact high and low. One of the statements we use is be careful that exactness can kill in these uh, in these markets. Okay, but it's a, mm -hmm. it's a good question. It's a fair right. question because mm -hmm. you know it's just as as uh, Julia said after the many years of trading, um, things get refined. You know, was it 23, 25 years, whatever it is, things get refined um, more and more. Right. Okay. So before we go, what we said early on, remember we said this mechanical mechanical reference was very questionable. And now what have we done? We've come back and taken it out. The next reference now is the overnight high. Incidentally, overnight highs and lows are sometimes very good day time frame references. Okay, uh, a final question, Julia? Um. 
let's just see here. Incidentally, I have not seen I have not seen a place that I would have wanted to short this market this morning. Right. Did I understand the unchanged and understand what's going on? Yes. I have not seen a place that I would have wanted to short this market this morning. Right. We had people ask, can we short the overnight high? And I said, you, we're still one time framing up, and you don't just want to step in front of the train bl blindly. Depends how it gets there, but clearly we want to see some excess before we what just you want fade see, what this you want thing. To see. You want to, if you're going to short it, you'd, you'd rather see them take out the overnight high and fail and come back and come in. Back and come right. back in. That's right. a much better trade. But this right. market, you know, this market's... Uh, it's it's on a mission this morning. It's uh, it's unbelievable. Christian's uh, going to get his outside day. But remember, we said, you know, one of the things we did not have a good high the other day, and you know, this was liquidation. Mm -hmm. All right, listen, Jim. Thank uh, you one all. question. Um, sure. You know, so how does the intensive work for people who are working nine to five? You know, John, we have people all over the globe in the intensive in Australia, Taiwan, Singapore, um, you know, Europe. So it does, um, it, people use it differently, but all the sessions are recorded. And really, you're getting the reports every day. You're seeing the chat comments every day. You can go back and review when you can be there for some sessions. Um, great. But really, it's all archived by the calendar day. So we, we have set it up to for review because Jim believes you got to go over this stuff and I know from my own experience it has been tremendously helpful in what I hear from fellow traders but um, it is set up to be used after the fact and uh, there's still a lot to glean from the program uh, without being there live obviously we'd love to all be full-time traders and that's what we're working toward but it's hard to work toward that if you're not doing something to educate yourself and you know develop that regimen of preparation and how to look at the markets and all the rest so there is a trade-off there working nine to five but you got to get there somehow and it is completely archived and designed you'll get reports PDF emailed to you every day and they're at the site it's designed for going back um, and also you know obviously you want to be there live but it certainly is made to um, accommodate we have many people full-time working and like I say on the other side of the clock on the other side of the world who are still utilizing it and finding results. Did you want to say anything, Jim? No, no. And it's the, um, you know, every, everything's, uh, the principles are applicable to any market that's financial in nature. It's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be exact. Markets that are thinner, um, thinner trading, overseas markets that are thinner, um, you know, it'll go through these references a little easier. But the overall principles, are very similar because they're traded by people and people are, are similar all over the world. Right. We have oh, right. crude traders, gold traders, euro stocks, 50 traders, spy traders. I mean, you're applying this in any market that you're trading. And like Jim said, the more liquidity it has, the bigger sample size, the more valid is the profile. But that goes for any market. Um, we all know that with liquidity. Um, okay. okay. And Thank you all very much. Uh, I'm going to sign off. I'm then going to bring up the chat comment for our, uh, our regular folks, and I want to thank everybody very, very much, and uh, we hope you find the uh, uh, desire to join us uh, both for the uh, uh, continuation program that's currently going on with chat every day and the January intensive. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you at the next, when is the next uh, educational webinar? Uh, next week, November uh it might be next Thursday, Jim. Um, no, no, I think it's next Monday. Let me just look real quick, everyone. It's Monday, preparing for Monday's trade in the week ahead. So we're going to have a 9 to 10.30 session on Monday. That's often called orientation for the week in the intensive, but that'll be nice to get our minds right for the week and get situated and anchored. Um, so that's it, sir. 9 to 10.30, Monday, November 24th, you'll be getting a notification from our email uh, service, and uh, you can always come to the, the jdaltontrading.com and check us out.
And Jim, we want to thank you very much. You did a great job. I know there was a lot of preparation getting ready for this for both of us, and thank you very much. Um, I learned a lot. I don't know about anybody else, but it was very helpful. So thank you, sir, for sharing. 40 years plus, we appreciate the accelerated learning curve because no one wants to do it all over again if we don't have to. So thank you, Jim Dalton. I will add a, a level of caution. Um, I don't know what the day is going to bring. We may go for new all-time highs. There's the, the day is very strung out. It's very strong. It's certainly a trend day so far. It's very strung out. However, if there's going to be a change, the first sign of change would be that the stop it, the market would stop one time framing. You do not want to fade. You do not want to fade a one time framing market. There's mm -hmm. nothing that says this market can't be going for the for the all time high. Uh, you just do not want to fade a one time framing market. Right. All right. Thank you all very much. Okay, and thank you, Mr. Dalton, very much. And thank you, everyone, for being here. And I will have this recording up in about an hour at the site, so if you want to review it, it will be up there for you. And everyone, have a wonderful day. Thank you for being here. We'll see you next week.